card sorting is a cornerstone of UX research by providing vital insights into how users naturally organize and prioritize information, card sorting is invaluable when it comes to creating information architecture. Ready for a journey to level up your card sorting studies? Let's explore some expert tips and tricks to make your research even better. Hi, my name is Alex and welcome to UX Tweaks channel. Today we are talking about card sorting best practices that will improve your research. We'll explore six best card sorting tips that will help you get more reliable results and improve the testing process for your participants. Let's jump right in. Our card sorting best practices start with a tip on avoiding causing fatigue to your participants. As tempting as it may be, we do not recommend including every single label from your menu, especially if your website's information architecture is complex. Especially if you run a bigger website with multiple information architecture levels and subsections. Better keep the number of cards you present to testers from 30 to 40. Moreover, by giving participants a time estimate for the research session, you help them manage their time and effort. This ensures a more engaging and productive sorting experience. The second card sorting tip of today's video is to use card randomization. Card randomization helps eliminate biases that may arise from the order effect. Order effect refers to the phenomenon when different orders in which the questions or response alternatives are presented may influence respondents' answers. In card sorting, always presenting cards in the same order may negatively affect the strategy by which respondents sort the cards. So, before launching the study, don't forget to set up the randomization of the cards. Each card and the information on it thus will be arranged differently. This will help bring more objective study results to your card sorting sessions. In addition to words, a great card sorting best practice is to use photos and pictures to illustrate your cards whenever it makes sense. This can vastly improve the participant's capacity to comprehend the meaning of a card and therefore the effectiveness of the card sorting effort. However, even if you're primarily using images, it's critical to accurately give cards well descriptive labels. Unclear labels may cause participants to interpret images differently based on their perspectives and experiences, potentially leading to ambiguity. Insufficiently clear labels in a study also pose challenges for comprehending participants' categorization decisions, thereby complicating the analysis process. Using card sorting should not be a one-time thing. It is much better to collect repetitive feedback. It will help identify consistent patterns in participants' decisions and continuously refine information architecture. We also advise using different versions of card sorting tests. For example, with UX Tweak, you can run three types of card sorting studies, open, closed, or hybrid card sorting. Open card sorting allows participants to organically create sort and name labels of the information architecture. This helps unveil unexpected patterns in users' mental models and thus better adjust the final information architecture. Closed card sorting provides a more structured framework. In closed card sorting, participants work with predefined categories, which facilitates easier quantitative analysis of study results. Having predetermined categories also enables researchers to analyze the consistency of participants' preferences better, as the latter have less space for creativity. Hybrid card sorting combines elements of both open and closed card sorting. In such a study, participants are presented with a predefined set of categories, but they also have the flexibility to create their own categories. To get the most out of your card sorting, you need to ensure you recruit the right participants. To guarantee that everyone you recruit matches your target user profile, use a screener at the beginning of a card sorting session. This will filter out the respondents who are not relevant to the study and make sure your results are as accurate as possible. Before your study is live and sent out to the respondents, find somebody to run a pilot version with. 
It can be a friend, a colleague, or any other person who didn't actively participate in creating the card sorting study. This will allow you to estimate the average time needed to complete the study, as well as spot possible mistakes in study setup and confusion that may arise. There we go. Make sure to follow our card sorting best practices and get the best to get the most out of your study. If you want to learn more about card sorting, check out UX Tweaks Card Sorting Guide. The link will be in the description. And don't miss out on our video about card sorting and tree testing if you'd like to have a better idea which testing better suits your research needs. Like and subscribe to watch more videos on all things UX related. See you next time.